coffee response. Oh. Okay. Like, I traveled like 
like an hour and some change to go see them perform. And I'm like, I would never do this for anybody, right? <laughs> but like, because I've been centering tenderness, I've been thinking about what it is to like care for my homies the way that like I've been caring for myself or that I would care for another who like I really care about, you know? Um, so yeah, and also thinking about that, I've been thinking about, so I, I've lost a lot of people in my life this year. Uh, I lost my father, I lost my grandmother, and uh, there's just been like a lot of grief happening. Uh, but like I think in thinking about tenderness, I've also been thinking about how I'm taking care of myself through grief, right? I feel like uh, people when they talk about grief or depression or mental illness, it feels like something that people feel like they need to get someone out of, right? You know what I mean? Like, and that's how I feel about my depression, right? But like. At the same time, maybe I just need to be cared for in it so I can understand it a little bit better, right? Not to say, I don't need to pass, right? <laughs> like, that's not it, right? But like, you know, with grief, like I don't need to be snatched out of my grief. I need to sit with my grief. I need to understand my grief, right? Because like loss is in all of our lives, but how many of us know how to take care of ourselves through it, right? And I feel like in, in the household and the family I grew up in, we were like, don't talk about that. Just let's try to make ourselves feel better. And it's like, okay, but then when it happens again, we're gonna feel even worse because we got this, what's happening now, and the thing we didn't handle in the past. So um, I was getting really emotional because when I got here, this pin says blooming on it. And uh, so I'm a writer, I'm a poet, all this. I, I created a poetry form called The Blooming. And uh, it's just like my attempt to get my homies to be more kind to themselves through their writing. Right, so my idea of the blooming is like when you create your blooming, to like tend to it, like when you're editing your poem, to tend to it like it was a garden, like it was a flower, because like a garden or flower, your work and your poems don't want you to hate yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, it can be frustrating, but like that's just the work of it. We shouldn't be like, oh my God, this is, like, you know what I mean? It's a garden, chill, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then um, to let the blooming bloom new work, so to take a line from the poem and to use it as the title for another poem, so. You know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just shut up and do it to my I am tired of yelling, of losing my voice to prove a point, to be heard, born, male, black, Dominican, been taught to take up space, but no one ever told me I could be a garden, could be soft and smell good, and bloom at volumes people usually walk past. Usually, lavender, mango cocoa, and pink sugar oils are how people remember me. How the air became antidote, became the search for the scent that filled their lungs with flowers, with what reminds them they too can be a home for breathing and blossoming joy. And the heart hugs that follow, that require us to hug with the left side of our bodies so that our hearts face each other while taking a deep breath and exhaling together, exhaling everything to try keeping us from being here. And this hug, this holy place that has no heaven except for the other person, for this intimacy is in no need of romance and no need of a false future promise to one another, but the promise of this hug ending when we are both ready to release each other back into the world, back to sidewalks brimming with ghosts and this promise of some danger. Some gardens are unlike anything you've ever seen, but you never asked what had to die for you to be this captivating. To be a garden is to take up space, hoping others will call you home. Call on rainy days too, days when clouds are all, so you forget to look west, forget to think light for its time, bright and generous, now retreating back into invisibility instead of staying where they feel unloved, where I will return. To be unloved is to have been loved incorrectly, loved enough to believe the lie of love being all I need. All the failed gods in my stomach are dead and screaming for tenderness, screaming like my father. A garden ended at the root, at his bipolar, his depression, his alone. And I blame his absence for not letting me show him how to water himself into what heals. What kind of son am I to think what is my father's isn't mine? Is it genetic? I carry his loneliness that isn't loneliness, but his choice to ignore the world. And, uh, and then uh, to take the line 
and to turn it into another poem. Uh, what kind of son am I to think what is my father isn't mine? I so I look a lot like mommy, right? So I look a lot like abuelo. So I look nothing like my father. But this gap in my teeth, how quickly my hair grows, the way my depression shuts out everyone's love, there's the resentment where my father is. In the space between my loneliness and the heaven of my brain, I call my father things other than father. Nothing I say makes him less dead. I say it was love, him not getting enough of it to live, him saying no to his pills and mommy and his three boys. And he never said sorry for anything, so I never asked him about what his brain made him do. Mommy wants me to find a psychiatrist and get diagnosed. I tell her I don't need someone to tell me what I already know. What kind of son am I to think what is my father's isn't mine? I tell her I need my father to say sorry. I tell her I waited and I waited and my father died. He said he would call me and I waited and I waited like I did on my 14th birthday in middle school graduation like he did for 23 of his birthdays and father's day. I'm practicing his practiced smile in the mirror. My gums bleed, enough blood in my, in my mouth to convince his ghost that there's space for him to speak here. I stay quiet, I stay still, my jaw loosen. You were the closest I could get to your mother's love. Mijito, I, I, Uh, they had Moonlight for free on the flight. So I was like, I'm definitely about to watch Moonlight free time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, and, I, and like this entire year, like I hadn't written anything really until this poem. Uh, so it felt like, like, like I was on this flight and I was like, I know what I need to write. I know what I need to write. And um, my, I heard uh, my friends, they were talking about some old Irish poet dude who said something like, uh, when I'm writing, I'm looking for the exact no. I'm looking for the right no. I'm looking for the exact word, right? So I feel like this poem is that, right? Also, super long title. Longest title I ever had. Okay. Pop's dead four months. Remembering Pops taught me to float on my back, watching moonlight on my Delta flight after leaving Abuela Ana's casket with Abuelos in Santiago, Dominican Republic. I'd be lying if I didn't feel their hands stack and securing my neck and spine. I got this ease with grief. Cry all I need to, not all I want to. Deep breaths, cups brimming with water. I feel Furthest from Abuelo. The God I had then ain't the ancestors I have now. I keep baby's breaths for everyone I hold in the heaven of my brain. Gorilla tape and lining the sarong my sister Monica gifted me. I tell you, if a flower could be a casket, my therapist helps me see I got things. Things about family and consistency. How love should have and should look. Everything isn't my fault. I love people to see what brilliant light love could have made of me. All I am is from grief. Defense mechanism, joy, and smile, and laugh, and dance, and hope. Thinking about getting a baby's breath tattooed under my eye. Imagining how fresh it'll look every time I cry. Thinking about how it's been four months since Pops died and the four ulcers they found in Mommy's stomach the morning of Abuela Ana's viewing and how Mommy couldn't come to Santiago to see her parents be together again. I tell you, if death isn't what makes a family, Right. Um, so I was raised in a Dominican household, and growing up, anything Latino, I was like, it's a dub. Like, don't give me that. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't like 
eating guacamole. I didn't like, you know, dancing salsa, bachata, merengue. I didn't like any of it growing up. And I just wanted to play video games and chill with my homies in the projects, right? Uh, so um, now, in my older age, like, I was at a Halloween party, right? And everybody was dancing salsa. And I was like, I want to learn. <laughs> Someone teach me now, right? And then they taught me it was like this, right? Eight. And then like I was keeping like my steps, like after I got home, I was like dun 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 what is that even? They're too young. They're too young. I know. They missed some. I'm glad we're here. No, no. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I was rapping a lot, right? Only because I went to. So, I was in high school for seven years. Uh, the administration and the older people I had to deal with growing up were boss who died, right? They were really black. And um, I ended up going to the second high school. And they were like, oh, you a poet, but you can't rap, though. I was like, I'm in Aries, so like, why are you trying to challenge me right now? Oh, right. So, uh, so I rapped. Y'all missed it. It was a good time. It was. And then, um, it had me thinking a lot about like my identity, right? Because like, a lot of times, like a lot of my homies just thought like I was a light-skinned black dude, which I am, right? But then like I speak Spanish, and they're like, hey, what's that? What did you do with your mouth? Right? And like they'll be freaking out. I'm like, yeah, I'm Dominican, man. And they're like, oh word? We ain't you couldn't tell. I was like, oh, it's crazy. Right? And then I would go to this high school and then uh, a lot of kids were like, you're not black. And I was like, excuse me? Right? So uh, yeah, I wrote this poem. And like my grandfather was like racist and like anti-black and like all this other, and he was Dominican. And his father was like dark skin. It's just complicated. We'll get into it. Yeah. Here's this poem. <clears throat> I'm realizing I am black. It's true. <laughs> One. What the? Uh-uh. Isn't that 
the blackest thing you've ever heard God say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of my friends were like, hey, let's go with some self-love poems. I was like, what's self-love? What are self-love poems? I don't got any of them for you, stay with me. I really had to sit and think about it. And uh, so yeah, this is my one self-love poem. Uh, I mad at my poems are self-love poems because I'm like, what's Gucci? I'm popping, I'm here, get at me, right? <laughs> but like this, I feel like like this poem like gets at it and I like closing my sets with this one because it's important. So like me. So uh, y'all still on Snapchat? Yeah. Okay, so I haven't used Snapchat in like a year and a half, maybe two years. Uh, my favorite thing? I would just take selfies with like the flower crown filter, you know, and I would just save it to my phone. I would even post it. I'm like, these are for me. Boom. My gallery and my phone about to look like a garden. A bunch of little garden flower meats. Right? So uh here's a poem about that. And then take it out talk about project X. And oh to the flower crown filter on Snapchat. As sunrise. I serve myself sunlight and stretch on my mother's balcony, uncoiling in the lavender of 6 a.m. skies. I say I am not what was done to me, and gold begins budding at my roots and blossoms into radiant grills. My mouth now a step on a staircase toward a heaven where a group of black kids is called a garden. I say, I am worthy of love and begin levitating through New York City, scanning concrete for what angels left behind in the wake of the new, 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 new New Testament. I say I don't want to kill myself in a casket filled with what won't let me live. I tilt my head where the light lands best. It's noon and I'm full of tomorrow and there isn't a devil to shame or even a God to question. All that matters is that I am here, growing, not waiting for any unanswered prayers. Instead, waiting to be part of a garden again. Thank you all.